In the wake of Donald Trump being found liable for $355 million in the big fraud case, one of the questions has been how on earth is he going to pay that? Does he even have the amount of cash he'd need to pay that figure? And Letitia James, of course, the New York Attorney General and the individual who brought this case against Donald Trump, has an idea as to how she'll make him pay. I want to bring in legal expert Aaron Parnas. What is that idea? Yeah, Luke, uh, she essentially said in a newly released interview that if Donald Trump doesn't pay up in cash, she's going to go after his assets, including the buildings he owns, like the big Trump Tower in New York City. This is what is known as civil asset forfeiture, when an individual who faces a very large judgment cannot pay up on that judgment. The government or the plaintiff that has the judgment typically goes after the person's assets. So she's coming after Trump, whether uh, in cash or in property. And that is brutal. That's the, the heart of his identity and brand. And she's willing to go after it. How would that process play out? What's the timeline here for how long Trump will be able to decide how he can pay posting the bond and then when she could start executing some of these actions? Yeah, so this isn't going to be an overnight thing. I mean, Trump is expected to appeal the major judgment, in which case he will have to post the bond, which is the $355 million or so. Trump claims he has that cash, so we'll see if he's willing to actually pay up and post that bond. In the event he doesn't post a bond and he doesn't appeal, then they can go ahead and execute the judgment immediately. Uh, on They can garnish wages. They can go after his property like 40 Wall Street. But one key point here is that the Trump Tower in New York is worth a lot more than $355 million. I mean, this is a several billion dollar building. So you're not going to have, it's not going to turn into the Letitia James Tower, the New York Attorney General <laughs> tower, tower overnight. What you're going to see happen is if they go after his property, they will force a sale of the property. And uh, the New York Attorney General's office would collect, or the, the state of New York would collect the outstanding judgment. At that point, it'll be over probably 500 million with interest, and then Donald Trump would likely get the rest, or the Trump organization would get the rest. That's kind of how the process would look, but we are probably, if I had to guess, several years away from that occurring. Gosh, I wish they could have done a special requirement in this ruling where it's the Letitia James Tower um, after the conclusion of the case. So on the subject of this case and it being appealed, I have our favorite lawyer, a clip of her, um, Aaron, Alina Abba on, or Habba, somebody said, please pronounce the H, Habba, um, on Newsmax, giving a pretty powerful bit of analysis as to what the grounds of appeal are for this fraud case. Take a look. What are your grounds on appeal here? What are my grounds on appeal is a better question. Uh, where do you begin? I mean, we could start with all the things we talked about, Rob, over the past six months on these cases, in this case in particular. Mm. What aren't the grounds on appeal, Aaron? <laughs> there aren't many, if any, <laughs> honestly. Um, it's pretty funny. So what a lot of people don't know and what a lot of trump's attorneys fail to recognize when they make statements like this especially alina haba on online or on tv is that when you appeal a case the only issues on appeal are legal issues they're not factual issues she's not going to be able to go up on an appeal in new york and essentially relitigate uh the specific loan amounts that trump was offered the misrepresentations he made the specific facts of the case that the the fraud that's set in stone the only issues on appeal now are specific legal issues when it comes to certain decisions made by judge and goron um certain parts of the judgment for example certain evidentiary rulings and there really weren't that many that uh could be challenged here or that have are viable on appeal i mean judge and goron really tried a pretty standard and pretty litigious case. He didn't really go out of his way to harm Trump in the courtroom through his evidentiary uh, ruling. So there really isn't much for Alina Haba here. Yeah. And this misunderstanding, at least rhetorically, of what the point of this appeal would be reminds me a lot of them going into the E. Jean Carroll defamation trial and trying to argue whether or not Trump sexually abused E. Jean Carroll when that was already litigated in the previous trial. And so that 
kind of was them constantly stepping on a rake because it wasn't going to move the ball down the field in that case because it wasn't even a matter of deciding the facts of whether or not he did what he was accused of again because that was already litigated in a previous case and this one was about defamation so a lot of misunderstandings or overt rhetorical miscommunications i guess going on there with alina ha but one more clip from her here's this from fox news no, I mean, I would never get into anything privileged, but I can tell you what the rules are. And within 30 days, even if we choose to appeal this, which we will, we have to post the bond, which is the full amount and some. Um, and uh, we will be prepared to do that. So, is, but how much is the bond? Well, it dep so <laughs> it's you're, you have to break it up. So there were obviously individual defendants that got fined. There was the company that got fined. But you're looking at roughly, let's call it close to four hundred million dollars for something that he did nothing wrong. Look, it's no coincidence, and I'll say it. They know by looking at his statements of financial condition that this guy is worth a lot of money, billions and billions of billions of dollars. And that didn't even include his brand, Martha. But what they're trying to do between this case, between my last case, is put him out of business. It's not going to work, number one. Number two, what they're doing is a scare tactic. Unfortunately, they picked the wrong guy to pick on, in my opinion, because he's strong, he's resilient, and he happens to have a lot of cash. Now, that does so it is an interesting, a lot of nonsense she said there, but uh, it did bring to my mind, what damage could this really do? She mentioned him going out of business or that being the goal here. What's the threat to his business livelihood the finances of this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very interesting. I think ultimately, at the end of the day, this may force Donald Trump into filing some type of bankruptcy proceeding at some point, because right now, Trump and his team are using this judgment and these cases as kind of political tools, not necessarily uh, talking about the impact that it will have on Trump personally. But if Trump even in, in a unlikely scenario where Trump is somehow back in the White House in January of next year, the judgment just doesn't go away. You can't pardon yourself in civil cases. You can't extinguish a civil judgment from uh, be, just because you're president of the United States. So even when he's even if he's in the White House in a few years for the next four years, they're still going to be able to go after him. And there is no reason why a lower court, why Judge Angoran would simply stay those garnishment proceedings uh, to take the property to satisfy the judgment, because it really has nothing to do with a potential presidency. So right now, while it may help him in the short term politically, in the long term, this isn't going away for Trump. And one other thing that people have to remember is that judgments like these gain interest uh, and gain interest on what, what the standard interest rate out that that is out there. I mean, that's anywhere from four to seven percent right now. And on a judgment of three hundred fifty five million dollars, four to seven percent. I mean, we already know that the judgment actually is now above four hundred million with interest. And within a year, it'll be above five hundred million and, and it'll just continue compounding. And by the time he gets out of office, if he were to be elected in November, um, he's going to have a potentially billion dollar judgment against him. And at that point, he'll have no choice but to file for bankruptcy and sell Trump Tower and all these other assets to satisfy creditors. So th this is terrible for Trump, whether or not he is actually intending on remaining in the business, in the real estate business in New York in the short term. It, it, it's awful for him in the long term. Wow. Brutal, but a delight to observe on this end. Aaron, where can people find you? On all my social media platforms at Aaron Parnas.